everyone good morning good afternoon good evening all depending on the time we're reaching you guys welcome back to our channel so good to have you guys back here again thank you once again for your continuous and massive support to this channel god bless you we really appreciate you we do not take you for granted we pray that even as you support this channel god almighty will support you in whatsoever you lay your hands to do in jesus name amen thank you once again guys yes my people as always we're back again with latest and most authentic happenings in the country this one is an interesting one we know recently um an official announcement was made regarding the passing um away of um the olu of worry we know he actually died earlier on but um because of traditions and then um, what what have you they decided not to put it out there in the open even when it came out there they they <laughs> they debunked it and called it um fake news but everyone knew that um, he had actually passed on his Royal Highness Ogiame Ikenwonli. And um, they stated that he was not dead and blah, 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 and all of that. But um, just a couple of days ago, they came out to officially announce his passing on and declared three months for mourning, stated all of those, and also um, stated um, the Olu of Ori designate. They called him as um, a Miko. But we know that uh, immediately after that, the Olu Bosheri of um, of the Shekiri kingdom, the person of Ayeri kicked against it and stated that that is not right, it is not happening. In an interview, he has actually given his reasons why he opposed the uh, installation of the new Olu of War. We'll bring you all of those details in a moment. But before we do, guys, please don't forget to like, share, and to subscribe. Press the notification bell, guys. Press the bell until it turns gray. God bless you. He was asked. The succession plans is tearing the Shekiri kingdom apart with fingers pointing at you as the ringleader. So why are you troubling the kingdom of your forebearers, especially considering your status as a chief? His response was, I'm not supposed to be doing this, but I just want to clear the air so that people will not misunderstand me. I don't have anything against Prince Teshola and Miko. All I'm saying is that we should just subject themselves to due process, not because of today, but because of tomorrow. These laws were made for us to guide ourselves. I begin to wonder when people compare these laws and the Nigerian constitution, when even the army have their own act, every organization, every one of the armed forces has their own act. So you can just look at Ishekiri's law and the act for governing themselves. In other words, if you want to be voted for, there are certain things you need to put in place. Let's say if you've been jailed for less than 10 years, you cannot contest for election. That does not mean you are not a Nigerian. You can vote, but you cannot be voted for. As I was saying, they should do things right. The right thing is subjecting yourself to due process. If you subject yourself to due process, it might even get to Teshola. That is what I'm saying. And that is what I met on ground. Nothing has changed. People should not take advantage of me and say that because I'm young, I don't know what I'm doing. If I'm young, I'm used to the customs and tradition. What is the due process you are talking about? He was asked. You know, we have the 1979 Edict, the Chieftaincy and Traditional Edict of 1979. Section 2 of that edict says, If the Olu is indisposed, the Olu Boshere will invite the royal family to tell them to get prepared to bring somebody that can be talked to. That is the Ola Ebi or Olori Ebi. So, when the condition is passed, he will not tell them to go and get me a successor, that is, Olu designate. But he will tell them to go in line with the edict and succession process. Within three months, the last Olus are Erewaju, Atuashe, and the present one, Ekinwonli. Teshola happens to be Atuashe's son, who was supposed to be the king in 2015, but he was disqualified. Because of Article Section 4 of the Edict in 2015, we now have two sections that are against Teshola that I'm talking about. Section 2, which says secession goes from father to son. If the son is not suitable, it now moves to the brother. If the brother is not suitable, it goes to the uncle. If there's no uncle, it goes to the grandson. If there's no grandson, it goes to other family member where Teshola belongs. So what I'm saying is subject to Teshola, to passing through this process let me go through the son the brother the uncles if there's any the grandson them it gets to you 
You cannot just come and tell me that the oracle disqualifies. I'm the only person and the other five chiefs that can take anybody that is picked out that passed through this process to the oracle. So what went wrong? They just came from nowhere in the family and said the oracle has chosen Teshola. And I said, no, that is not the process. That is the issue. The thing is that you don't even have the right to go and consult the oracle. Three years ago, when I wanted to be Olog Boshere, they tried to manipulate the oracle against me. And it was all over the news that the oracle rejected me. How come the oracle accepted me later? So these are the kind of people we are dealing with. After people will be complaining of government and corruption, when inside their houses they cannot do the right thing. This is just a traditional stool. And that's just all I'm saying. I don't have any issue. I just want them to follow due process. But the majority of all Ishekiri appear to be in support of the current development. I mean the choice of Teshola and Miko. Ayere said, the issue has nothing to do with the majority. You can see what is happening in Buckingham Palace. There's a law there that stipulates that when you go and marry a black person, you will not benefit X, Y, Z. You can see what is happening to Harry. In every culture and tradition, every tradition, there are rules and regulations that guide it. You don't leave it open. You can imagine British people. The people we learn from in politics, there may be a law saying something about if you have been convicted before, you can contest for an elective position. You won't be able, but that does not mean you aren't a Nigerian. That's what I'm saying. He was further asked, the way things are now, it looks as if some of your people have been turned against you. You now appear like somebody fighting the entire nation. Don't you think so? It doesn't matter. Sometimes it happens like that. There's always a minority opinion. Majority may have their way at the end of the day, but the minority opinion must be recorded. What's your next move to revert to the current status quo in Iwere land? I'm still on consultations. I have leaders and elders from the community, the Wari Kingdom. I must consult for the way forward. The family that I'm holding, the Olog Boshere, on their behalf, I have not consulted them. I can't do this on my own. What time are we expecting to hear from you after the consultations? Hopefully, by next week, Monday, I will hold a world press conference. Every tribe has enemies. Are you not afraid that the enemies of Ishekuri Kingdom might capitalize on the current call to further polarize the nation? I don't think so. That is why I'm, I will embark on wider consultations before I take further steps. But some people are saying that you are preparing to go to court. What do you have to say about that? Ayeri said, well, I've not said that all these issues need wider consultations. And from a family, the family I'm holding the Olog Boshere in trust for, I've not consulted them. Definitely, they will tell me what steps to take. Definitely, I can't take the decision on my own. How about your purported suspension? Can you speak on that? He said, sometimes I don't want to talk about it because they don't have the power to do what they are doing. As far as I'm concerned, in the history of Ishekiri, no one family can come out and suspend a chief. It is something we should be discussing. Wow. So, um, Ayeri has given his reasons why he's kicking against them, um, Teshola. The main thing he's stating is that um, there is a process and that due process has to be followed, not just stating that they've consulted the oracle let's hear your take down below in the comment section thank you once again for staying tuned please don't forget to like share and to subscribe till i come your way again bye